Recent weeks I've been talking about serious topics on flight trainings and flight schools. Last week was all about scams flight school too. So I needed a relaxed episode. So this week I'm gonna give you a very short episode of you know my short episode. Once I start talking, it's gonna be blah blah. You're partying behind you. What's up future captain? Hope you're doing great there. Soon you'll be on your way to learn one of the most rewarding and amazing skill, flying. I want to list five skills that would help you so much while you're abroad. These are from my own experience and I never had uh, one of the skill, skill number two on this list and you have no idea how much I struggle by not having that skill. Of course, none of them on the list are must-haves so don't start panicking if you don't have any of these skills. Um, just go through the list and if you do believe that you are lacking on any of these skills, then try to work on it because it will make your training period so easy. In the comment section, please tell me which skills you're good at and which the one that you need to work on. Or please tell me a different skill that's not on the list that you're working on. Number five, reading skill. I know you might be going, oh come on, I can read. I know you can read too, but many students just read the textbook they study before the exam mostly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I was the same in my school days. Wow, that's 20 years ago. Damn, I'm so old. Just study and read the textbook to just to pass the exam period is over in your life from now on. You're entering an industry which requires you to read and learn throughout the entire career. More you read, more you learn. More you learn, you will become a world knowledge pilot. Bear in mind, I'm not just talking about reading your textbook. You should start to form a habit of reading aviation news, uh, blogs, magazine, and mainly books that are related to flight training or general aviation. Expand your knowledge on your field and master the topics of uh, metrology for pilots, air level, and flight aerodynamics. All this reading will put you in a map on your grammar class and will also help you to build a much needed confidence in your training. Even after your training, you can show off the skills in your practical test and airline interviews. Contact me so I can fully guide you and let you know which books and blogs that you can read that would help you massively. Number four, networking and communication skill. Mastering this one skill helped many students land their first job with the airline or flying private jets or work in a school as an instructor. If you think about it, it's not just in aviation. Any industry knowing the right person at least give you a chance to get an interview to that company. Airlines no exception from that. Mostly before anyone knows about job opening, the company staffs will come to know first and if you know that right person, then that's your advantage. And you can never have good networking if you don't have a good communication skill. Since my school days, I was working on my communication. I used to be so quiet and I had very few friends because who wants to be a friend with someone never speak a word? It affected my confidence too. Even if I know the answers, I wouldn't raise my hand to answer it. Later stages, I failed many summer jobs interviews because I was very bad at communication and I talked very less. Well, now I'm completely opposite. My wife always asks me, when are you going to ever shut up? But good communication is not just talking non-stop. Um, over the years, I actually watched countless hours of videos and read many books on communication. Okay, I'm not going to teach you how to master communication skill because there are many, many people out there way better than me to teach you how to do that better. <laughs> um, but I can tell you one thing that good communication means great networking. Now I have met and friends with great people in the industry because of this one skill. I'm talking about hundreds of flight school owners, many captains and first officers of big airlines, even few airlines owners. Never ever thought a boy from a village in Sri Lanka will have a friend in high ranks. Great communication and networking is the key. Number three, driving skill. I was 14 when I first allowed to ride a bicycle to a school in Sri Lanka. After that I moved to UK so I learned to drive a car a bit earlier. But most of my friends from back home in Sri Lanka not allowed to drive a car till their mid-20s or early 30s. I'm talking about 20 years ago and I'm aware that 
things are a bit different now with the new generation. But even nowadays, I guess students in their 20s coming to fly without knowing how to drive a car. And the worst part is, some of them even have a car in their house. They normally have drivers to drive their car or parents don't allow them to drive. I know you're going to get a defensive mode and argue back and say, oh, driving a car is not one of the requirements to start training or becoming a pilot. You definitely win that debate. I agree. It's not a requirement. But let me tell you how important it is. If you choose to train countries such as USA, Canada or Australia, especially a city like Florida, without a car you are screwed. Public transportation almost non-existent there and typically most of the school uh, airport far from mainland. So either you walk or ride a bicycle, which I did for a month at the start of my training. For 7 o'clock flight, I'll wake up at 5 o'clock and I'll start riding that bike 6 o'clock in the cold December. Then to fly for 2 hours after tiring bicycle ride. Wow, good old days. My school didn't even have a school van. Most of the school nowadays have the school van. They pick you up and drop you every day. And once a week they will take you for grocery shopping, all the students together. I don't know about you, but I can't let others tell me what I should do, what I should do, especially in my personal life. Um, also, how are you gonna go to that gorgeous beaches in um, Florida and all midnight parties in Miami <laughs> in your bike? I can hear the non-driver's mind. Or we are coming to train and study, not to party. You're not going to a prison or a military training. Well, you relax over the weekend, your energy level will be higher following intense week that you have. If you're not convinced enough, let me tell you how driving will directly will improve your flying skill. Driving a car becomes your full responsible for your own action. So you are so responsible for yours and your passenger's safety. Just like flying when you are pilot in command, you take full responsibility. Driving a car will enhance your anticipation and diligence and motor skills, which are vital skills for flying also. You will start making big progress on decision making. All these small skills start to grow inside when you're driving without you even realizing, which will play an immense part when you fly. So my advice is when you get to the school, Get a few more friends and buy a cheap car. You can buy a car, second hand car for around two thousand dollars. That's five hundred dollars each, and if four of you, I think that's worth it. Anyway, I should stop. I started to sound like a car salesperson. <laughs> I don't care. Have a your little bicycle if you want, like a ten years old kid. But but please, yeah, just learn to drive a car at least, even if you don't buy a car. Number two, cooking skill. You know they say it's very easy to advise but very hard to listen and follow. My mom has been telling me to learn to cook over 25 years I think. When I was at my university, I went to university in Brighton. Uh, it was far away from London and uh, where we live. Um, my mom used to pack me lunch over the weekend and each box she would mark to Monday, Tuesday to Friday and I put it in the freezer and every day I would take it and heat it. And, yeah. This is so embarrassing. I did this for three years and even that didn't teach me a lesson. When I started my training in Miami, obviously my mom couldn't pack me lunch again from UK to USA. So I struggled. Every day fast food. Even today if I see McDonald's sign, I cringe. Because I genuinely think I had more McDonald's than McDonald's brothers themselves. It's not just me. Most of the, my pilot friends were the same. We know that um, as a pilot, we have to take care of ourselves, our health. But when you're so hungry, you don't know how to cook and the only option you have is fast food. And don't you dare tell me that two minutes noodles is cooking, alright? It's not just bad for your stomach, it's bad for your wallet too. Let's do some maths. One meal, either a Big Mac or KFC or Subway, costs around $10. With breakfast and dinners, add another 10 So that's $20 per day. That is $600 per month. That is a lot. If you cook for yourself, you can budget around $150 to $200. Okay, maximum $300, you little piggies. Also, while you're saving money, you can have a healthy food too. So go to the kitchen when your mom or dad cooks, or go to the aunt who makes that excellent dish, or your favorite curry only your grandma can make. Let it 
write it in a book or record it on your phone so you can cook and eat while you're starving your training number one money management skill by far this is the most important skill that you will need not just the time you're abroad for the training also this will be very decisive in your financial part of your life I understand it's a hard hard skill to master especially when you're young and you were so tempted to do so many things in your new place and explore that city and that restaurant I learned it in a hard way I was living in Miami when I did my training so you can imagine my spending went a bit over the top just like me many of the students in their early 20s never had thousands of dollars in their bank account before in their life so it's very difficult to manage but one way or the other way you have to be good at managing your finance if you want to finish your training within the money you initially plan to spend more you spend means more your parents going to struggle make a full financial budget plan set amount for each category and stick to it for example grocery $200 a month and gym $20 and restaurant $75 or nightlife $100 etc you know what I mean and make sure you stick to that and, and I'm well aware it's difficult when you get peer pressure to go out when someone asks you there is no shame when telling your friend I can't come out today and if that is your friend he or she will understand and respect your decision from this list you must have realized some of the skills are must have whether or not you go into the pilot training it will help you in any industry I will never go too far to tell you that if you don't have any of these skills you will not become a great pilot I wouldn't do that but if you are lacking in these skills soon you will realize how much is going to affect your training in financially and physically if you have any questions or if you need some help on improving any of the skills uh, comment me below or message me on whatsapp facebook or instagram whichever one you like all the details in the description and also if anyone have a great food recipe Send me that too. <laughs> like to try something new. <laughs> Good day, future captain.